What up boys and welcome back to another video. So I've been doing this series where I'm taking you guys through all of the dungeons that I do gold farm in. And instead of just showing you guys uh, what I have received from doing it for let's say 100 runs, we're going to talk a bit more detailed about how it's done and what you could possibly get. Like uh, what are you after? Because whenever I do the, the uh, these dungeons, if I do it 100 times and I show you guys the loot I've received, I'm just usually scraping the surface of what you could potentially get. And even though I've featured something like Ultimate a million times before, there's been a lot of people who have started to subscribe and watch my YouTube channel uh, like more recently in Shadowlands or maybe even when Classic WoW came out. So there's a lot of people who constantly, uh, whatever, doesn't really matter which dungeon I do, but there's always a ton of people asking me, Yo, student, why you're farming that said dungeon? What are you after? What is the best item you can get? And so on. So in this video, we're talking about Uldemad. Uh, this is, has been a really requested dungeon in my previous videos in this series. So I'm excited to do it and tell you guys why you should or should you now farm Uldemad. So the first thing we're doing is taking you guys through the entire dungeon and I'm showing you guys how I run it. So any of these routes, I don't claim that these are like the best routes or anything. This is just the way that I run the dungeons and the routes that I'm taking. So we're taking you guys through the route and then we're talking a bit about the loot that you can possibly get. What's good, what's bad and so on. So before we do start the route, I want to mention you guys can still get my 0 to 10 million gold guide 50% off. It's a book that I made like half a year ago, something like that, that takes you from zero gold to 10 million gold step-by-step -step guide that will always be updated. So whenever a new expansion comes along, I'm going to update the book for that expansion. So it's always relevant. And with Classic TBC coming out, I also made a complete gold guide for Classic TBC that would also receive constant updates to the book. And you can find links to these two down below in the description so i'm gonna go ahead in old man and i'm showing you guys the route so keep in mind that some people actually uh they prefer to pull the entire dungeon and then pull all the mobs at the end now that's cool and i used to do that before they nerfed monks right the only thing you got to keep in mind if you want to do that in old man is that you have to kill all the mobs before the first boss because if you don't, you're going to run back and uh, you're not going to be able to kill them. Uh, it's super annoying. I'm not sure why it's that way, but you have to kill every single mob that I'm killing right now before this guy, Revelosh. Like after this Revelosh guy, the entire dungeon is, uh, is free to pull the entire thing and they will all follow you to the end. Sometimes you can screw up and you can like step on a small obstacle on the ground or something like that. And the uh, the mobs is going to evade and run back. Super annoying. But like now, the last couple of years, I've just been uh, doing the entire uh, dungeon by killing and looting like I'm doing right now. The reason for that being that I'm running a speed set through it. So I gain movement speed whenever I, uh, whenever I kill stuff. I kill stuff and it triggers, uh, for instance, my food buff there to Tar or uh, gives me more secondary stat. To, it triggers my weapon enchant the uh the wind walk for instance so i'm just walking faster um uh, when i kill stuff rather than just pulling mobs um uh, alongside me so ultimate is really important to uh, if you have a speed set tune you should easily be able to pull every single mob in the dungeon um uh, within six minutes so you can do 10 runs in hours and like just constantly keep on going the only thing that is annoying these days is the AOE cap. So when you swipe, you can use trash. However, doesn't have any cap on. And I would definitely recommend you guys to bring a profession or a tune that allows you to open up a chest. The first chest spawn is going to be down in this uh, scorpion pit thingy. And as you can see, it's locked, but I have an inscription. So I can use the scroll of unlocking to open up the chest. And the reason why this is important is because chests have a higher chance of obtaining rare items like blue items. And that's where all the gold and all the mana is going to be at. So that was the first possible chest spawn. And now we're killing it. Make sure you kill the bosses too. It was believed back in the days that you could only get the super items of all the from bosses uh, and the chests. 
However, that's not true. I've personally myself seen and received uh, super items from uh, like just small scorpions on the map. So the second chest location spawn can be right here in this room, right here in that corner, but it's not up this time. So we're going to keep on moving. So make sure you get all of the mobs. We've got to kill this guy too. I'm lucky because I play a druid, so at the end of the dungeon, I can just use uh, my dream walk twice to port in and out of the dungeon. If you play a different class that doesn't have that option, you can uh, just sign up for a custom group, like a pre-made group. Leave that pre-made group and you will be ported out after a minute. So it's important that you time that so you don't wait until you kill the last boss and then you make and disband the group. You want to do it slightly before that and time it well. And then we've got to kill this guy. As I said, like right now I'm even looting. There's so many people complaining that whenever I'm showing uh, the routes that I'm taking, I don't loot. And uh, I don't know, they don't want me to miss out on any loot. So now I'm actually looting as well. But mostly because it's old man. And imagine missing out on a super item. So we're going in here, killing these mobs as well. Even though it's a dead end, it's still worth doing. Because we have the time to do so. And I would normally run this faster if I'm focused and I'm not making a video. So killing these guys. Right here. There's more mobs over here. Get them down. And now we're closing in uh, towards the end of the dungeon. So get these guys too. Open the door. This is where you would normally kill if you pull the entire dungeon. This is where you would normally just go around the corner and you would stand here and you would wait for all the mobs to come to you. Because the next step uh, requires you to click this altar, wait for these stone golem thingies to, uh, to spawn, kill those and you continue down to the last boss. And you always want to do this because the, behind the last boss there is a chest, 100% a chest and... Uh, I've seen many people receive super items from that exact chest. So killing these guys. No blue item. This uh this test route that I'm showing you guys will be cool with a super item while showing you the run. Okay, last door. Gotta summon the boss once again. And I once received a Papal Fess, a super item from this guy right here. Come on, it takes a while to uh to spawn this guy. You gotta do some RP. You kill him, loot him, and this is the chest that I was talking about. Ancient treasure. So you open up that one. Boom. No blue items. And then, as I said, since I'm a druid, I use Dreamwalk to pour it out. And then it's important to, uh, when you're outside, you reset the dungeon before you pour it back in. That way, you're going to be ported directly to the entrance of uh, the dungeon. And that's... Uh, that's the route. That's how I farm it. Uh, there's people doing it different ways. As I said, some people pull the entire dungeon, but that is how I farm it. So now we're going to be talking about old demand. Should you farm it? Shouldn't you farm it? And so on. So normally these videos are why you should farm X dungeon, right? The difference with old demand is a lot of people look blindly at the super item, the Trill of the Hunt after a super item, and they would be far better off farming any other dungeon in the game. Because the truth is, I've been uh, farming and uh, making content for like five or six years, and the average guy that I've talked to has done over a thousand Ulderman runs before they received the... Uh, a super item so you're not you're going to make more gold with the random blue items that drops in um that isn't considered a super item than the actual super items themselves and back in the days the super items some of them for instance the uh, pendulum was also a best in slot twink item but that has changed now so some of the items have even gone down in value uh to uh, what they were valued at previously so, the items that you are after that isn't super items, but are still really good, is like the Stone Vault Bonebreaker. Uh, the best one that isn't considered a super item is the Jinsu Sword. The Jinsu is, uh, I love the Jinsu, I made so much gold on it. 
uh, Jin Su. This one, right now, it's only 50,000 gold, but I've sold uh, plenty of them for 100,000 gold. It looks like a ninja sword, like a regular ninja sword, but it's something with the way that you wield it when you have it on, if it's on the hips or like in an X on the back or something like that. But they sell super well. And um, then you have less good as the skull plate bracers and the monolithic bow. They're not really worth that much. And you also have the uh, obsidian cleaver and the annealed blades. Uh, other shitty blue items are like the spire wind feather, the unearthed bands, the leg arts of the vault, and a beacon of hope. None of these are really good. Uh, many of them used to be like 20k items, but right now... There's so many people farming old man. It's been mainstream to farm old man to hunt for those super items. So the value on those blues have gone down drastically. However, the super items. Now those are good. I'm going to search some of them up. And I'm going to be surprised. Like the jackhammer is one of them. It's not up on the auction house, obviously. It's super hard to get. You have the, the dig master. There's none on the auction house. Super fucking hard to get. You have the Spouders of Lost Age. There's going to be none on the auction now. I could have told you that before I searched them up. And then you have an item that I've bought uh, in order to try and flip myself, which is the Pendulum of Doom. There's none on the auction house right now. Uh, but I, uh, I messed up. I bought it when it was a million gold back in the days. And that was a steal. It was the original level Pendulum of Doom. The best in slot twink weapon. And then the blister, there was like a patch coming along, and you have different the scaling, like blue items could scale to like epic quality and so on. And I just got bamboozled on that deal. Ended up selling it with a loss after like a year of trying. And then you have the uh the minor the miner's hat of the deep. It's not on the uh the auction house but that's a really cool one that's actually a helmet that you could sell for they're so hard to price all these super items but it's like four hundred thousand gold and all the way up to the, uh, like 1.5 million gold this is super hard to price you also have the shadow forge bushmaster a gun uh that i've sold uh twice now not on the auction house right now and i play in a full pop eu realm and then you have the papal fess not on the auction house so they're really hard to get. I'm leaving this list, by the way, of all of these items down below in the uh, description in case you don't understand my accent when I say them out loud. But those are like the items that you can get from Ulderman. When it comes to green items, there's really no good green items. That's why I don't recommend people to go and do Ulderman. Because the only items besides from the Ulderman specific items that's worth keeping... It's going to be like plans, patterns, formulas, stuff like that. We're talking uh, like the pattern for the rich purple silk shirt. We're talking lesser parry, the searing gold blade, stuff like that. Some random uh, like letterworking patterns and so on. But green items like green transmog, absolutely horrible. And now that even the uh, the random specific uh, blue items from Old Man are horrible in value... Ultimate is just a very bad dungeon to do. Sure, there's going to be a uh, Johnny watching this video, leaving a comment down below saying, yeah, but student, I did seven runs of Ultimate and I got a Papal Fest and sold it for 700,000 gold. But uh, in reality, most people are not going to make a lot of gold running Ultimate. It's not going to be an efficient use of time. So I would only... Run old demand. If you have a solid auction house, you've done all the other dungeons. You have uh, done like uh, crafting for transmog. So you're like kind of up to date. You have like over a thousand transmog items, and you just want to try it out for fun, right? To see if you can get it, or you don't really need gold at all. You just want to hunt for a super item. But it's I see uh, constantly. Too many people who started out, uh, well, that want to start out with making gold and specifically uh, transmog farming, and they spend a lot of hours in old demand, uh, and it, they just, they shouldn't. They really, really shouldn't do that. So that is my take on old demand. 
which uh, I've explained in the past as well uh, when people talk about Ultima and that's my opinion on it and that's pretty much it for today's video so thank you all so much for watching and if you want me to feature more dungeons uh, in this format then please like the video so I can see that there's a lot of people interested in this sort of content and yeah thanks for watching and I will see you all in tomorrow's video but until then bye bye